Welcome to the Expanding Worlds podcast. I'm your host, Deborah Caldo. This week, we continue to chat with Caroline. Last week, we talked about senses, and Caroline gave us what I thought was an easy to understand summary of auditory processing disorder and sensory processing disorder. More importantly, she talked about the impact both of these can have and how they are often underdiagnosed. As I said last week, it gave me some food for thought when it came to certain situations I've faced with my daughter. This week, she offers us her thoughts on navigating the system, which often seems to be designed to make our lives more difficult, not easier. As she says, being a parent is difficult enough, let alone throwing in the extra challenges having a child with additional needs brings. I have to say from my own viewpoint, much of what she said reminded me of our battles, where one minute you're the expert and the next you have little say in what the future of your child might be. It shouldn't be a battle, but let's be honest, it often is. Of course, there are plenty of great professionals who have the best interest of your child at the forefront of everything they do, but there only needs to be that one person who doesn't believe in the future of your child to make it feel like the world is against you. As Caroline reminds us, the key is people management, staying calm and not always saying what you really think. I'm not sure how often you've wanted to scream, shout, and probably use words you shouldn't. But don't seems to be the tip Caroline is giving us. Not easy, I'm sure we can all agree. Caroline also talks about the need to be proactive and do the research so you become an expert on what is possible for your child. This is something I agree with quite strongly because you know that you are your child's best advocate and sometimes it will only be you who really believes, actually knows that your child is capable of so much more. We finished this week's interview by hearing a bit more about what future career options James is considering. Like most teenagers, his plans are varied and in some cases need a bit more planning. This is a bit like our house, where the weather girl option remains on the table. If you haven't listened to part one of Caroline's podcast, then please have a listen to that as well. But for now, let's get on with part two. What would be your top tips for other parents? Parenting's hard and parents get blamed for everything. And so you add on to any kind of boiling pot of parenting with all the different advice and bits you get, um, the situation of of additional needs. And really, where is your capacity to go and push? And bearing in mind, when you bring your baby home from hospital, there will be a professional at some point who turns to you with a very sweet smile and goes, you know what, as the parent, you are the expert on your child. And you go, that's lovely, thank you. What am I doing? They say to you, you know your child best, so therefore we need to listen to you about your child. But the minute your child has an issue that requires these professionals to dip into budgets, to actually start funding um, support for them or therapy, suddenly you don't have an opinion. Suddenly you can't know what you're talking about. So the only way as a parent you can influence what's going to happen for your child is by maintaining a persona and boy it is hard of and bearing in mind you're sleep deprived you're broke you're worried you're stressed to high heaven you have to maintain this persona of being reasonable involved uh, as intelligent as you can manage which i will say on there are days and you have to be able to hold professionals to account while keeping them on side and that is not taught in any school that i've ever been to you know and it involves asking questions rather than saying look i'm really sorry you're an idiot this is how this needs to happen you can't say that because you're not a professional what you have to say is i've noticed this how do you think this needs to be looked at investigated handled dealt with and through asking questions and allowing professionals that respect choke a little bit with some professionals that was really hard others not hard at all but by actually acknowledging their skill base you need to pull out what is best for your child and not be fobbed off by boilerplate this has worked everywhere else so we're going to use this because that's way too easy you need to actually say well we'll try it let's test and measure let's try it so how long do you reckon it will work before we see results what results are you expecting to see and see if they're right and if they're wrong don't wait for your next appointment which can be six months a year later don't wait for the next annual review come back and say email them always maintain that polite contact if you walk out of that meeting 
and go and kick the tires of your car and go to the beach and throw stones in the sea which was a big habit of mine for a while and basically or go home and you know whatever it is that you need to scream shout work out that frustration and anger do it but for goodness sakes don't do it in the meeting don't do it anywhere near the professionals because it doesn't help in fact i actively think it hinders and i've seen that from both sides i'll be honest i saw it myself as a parent i also spent a a decade as a school governor and um, saw how the staff were reacting to parents who were coming in very stressed with ch- they had children with additional needs in the school and they were coming in very stressed because their child was about to be excluded or their their child was unhappy or, or really genuine I think they had an argument their child's needs weren't being met but because the only person they could see that was the problem was the school they were hitting up against the school and they created this rift between school and home which is then so difficult to break down and ultimately at the middle of all of this is a child who's not having their needs met and and my advice to those parents always used to be you need to go and educate yourselves and I don't mean that in any kind of snobby way I do mean this in go and read go get on the internet start googling go find open days of other schools go find special needs schools it may not be suitable for your child but go and see what they do there because i guarantee embedded into every classroom of a special needs school will be techniques and strategies that you won't have seen in mainstream and if you go and you say what is that you know you've seen something on the wall that looks a bit odd and you're like what is that and ask them about it they don't expect you to know. You're not a professional in these circumstances. But go and say, what is that? Okay, well, what's that useful? How does that work? Then you can come back and you kind of, you can Google it. You can read up on it if you feel it is relevant. But sometimes knowing what's out there enables you to walk into those meetings a little bit more equipped with, okay, well, have we thought about this? is that who would who would know if this would work for my child and it enables you to again it comes you then come across as a, as a parent who's engaged who's reasonable and no matter how much how professional your professionals are you have to understand they're being paid to do a job at the end of the day they will go home go home to their families and their lives walk in their front doors cook their dinners talk to their children and your child will not be on their head. I'm, I'm sorry, it just doesn't happen. They, they have their own lives. So when they walk back into that school, are you going to be a parent that they sigh and go, oh, they're coming in today? Or are you going to be that parent that they're like, okay, they've handed me something I'm interested in. Okay, well, let's, you know, this is worth exploring. It shouldn't be like that. It, it should be that every child has equal access and this and the other. But realistically, our system is so broken, so underfunded that if you want the best for your child, you need to tick some boxes on demonstrating that you're willing to meet them toe to toe and go, OK, how are we going to make this happen? And ultimately, I will say it was not easy. I developed a lot of grey hair. Yeah, it's tough. But I, I would actually say to every parent, go equip yourself with knowledge and try so hard to keep the people around your son on side so that your name doesn't actually end up on a dartboard. It's not actually the best place to be. So future-wise, does he have an idea of what he'd like to do? Well, we've hit onto a number of different things over the years. I mean, I, I love watching children develop ideas of what they're going to be. I've had to break him of the idea that he'll ever scuba dive, because unfortunately with his lungs following the CDH when he was born, scuba diving sort really on the list similarly astronaut that was one of those really difficult conversations i didn't want to i didn't want to pluck that one because i just i loved the idea of, of it but you know i just let that one gently ride along for a while he he loved the idea of working for lego lego is a massive thing and, and that you know he researched a lot about lego but his idea of commuting to denmark every day may need some work so actually planning his life is very entertaining because occasionally you do have to have some very gentle uh, and we try to keep it quite humorous discussions about well, how, how's that going to work then? I mean, he actually told us, Plow, well, I'm going to invent, you know, matter transportation like they have in Star Trek. And I went, OK, fine, you do that. Denmark's on the table again. At the moment, he has two ambitions and he's not quite sure what, what which of them were best. And I actually said, you know what, why choose? Just let's see what happens with both of them. One of them, he wants to be a professional gamer. I have discovered this is a, a career of that generation that perhaps we didn't have as an option when we were younger. And, you know, that, that involves having a YouTube channel and basically becoming a bit of an online personality. And I'm not exactly sure how that turns into money. I'm very lucky that my brother-in-law works for a company, which are an esports company, and they host tournaments and, and things with 
these gamers who are big personalities and who earn a lot of money from winning tournaments of games. So there is actually something out there that didn't exist 10 years ago, so I'm kind of holding that in reserve. He is very good at games. He beats the pants off of everybody else in the household with every game that I've come across. So you know what? We'll wait and see. So I'll be honest, I don't know. My concern for the future is always, you know, what's going to happen after school. Home's a very comfortable place for James and I can see that he would very easily slip into the staying at home and not really doing anything life and ultimately I don't think that's healthy I don't think it makes them happy and I don't think it gives them any kind of purpose or or ambition or life to to kind of go hey I did that on a you know on a Friday night I did that this week I'm not sure what the future holds for James I really am not I as a parent, I'm sitting there looking at financial planning. I'm looking at, well, what's going to happen when we die? You know, what, what's, how, who's going to look after him? Because I can see the journey's not done for James. He, I think he'll still continue to change and develop and find new skills and perhaps learn to cope more and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and that's something I really am passionate about. Every child with additional needs getting to that point where they can maximise their strengths. Um, and let's face it, that pressure comes, you know, the only way that's going to be achieved is from the parents. Caroline, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Key takeaways, stay calm, even if it's the hardest thing imaginable. I wouldn't be telling you anything you don't already know if I said getting angry doesn't actually help. Of course, that's not to say you don't go home and throw a few obviously soft objects around the house. Become the expert on what options are out there for your child. This helps your child, but also aids your relationships with those professionals you deal with. At best, they will welcome your input. At worst, they will be aware that you know what the options are and won't be fobbed off very easily. As always, if you could leave a podcast review, that would be great. And if you have any recommendations for guests or for topics you want me to talk more about, then you can message me on Instagram or Facebook at Deborah Caldo, or you can email podcast at expandingworlds.com. Thank you.